Hi guys, it's me, Trudy Lee. How's everybody doing? I'm doing pretty good. It is, I can see on my computer here, 94 degrees. <laughs> but we're having a cold front come in by this evening. This morning when I got up, it was 56 degrees. I got up super early. Um, and uh, it was beautiful. It was wonderful. I opened the doors and everything. All the animals are out. They're enjoying it. Wonderful, wonderful weather. My husband slept kind of late, so I got up super early. I was up before six o'clock, and my husband slept till 10 o'clock, and then he got up and drank his coffee, and he said, let's go for a walk. It was 90 degrees. Yeah, maybe 89 but it was hot already, but it's a little bit drier, so it wasn't too bad, but that, it's pretty warm. And we took the dogs with us too. So we just did a short walk, but we're gonna try it again tonight when it's a little cooler. <laughs> so tomorrow, I think the high is supposed to be 75. So that's quite a bit difference. And it's gonna get really, really chilly. So it may be even down to you know 50 degrees, 49 degrees, 48 degrees, something like that. Yay, I can't wait. Anyway, it's going to be for a couple of days and I'm going to go back to the heat, I'm sure. But I hope you all had a nice weekend. It was a long weekend. You know, um, my niece was here with me. She's still here actually with me. So I've really enjoyed her company. I'm really glad that she's here with us. I know she's very lonely where she's at because she lives with my other two sisters, but you know, they're doing their own thing. So they don't really see each other. Um, my, my sister works from home and she works on her computer and, uh, she has to be at her computer. You know, she can, she can get a lunch break, you know, and I think a 15 minute bathroom break and that's it. So she's back in her bedroom all the time. My other sister has leukemia and she's in the bed a lot. So they're not seeing each other a lot. So I know she's appreciating just have somebody to talk to. So I've enjoyed her being here. I hope she stays a little longer. Okay, you guys. So the reason why I was coming on was uh, because I hope y'all heard about Iran. Iran, um, I, I think Israel is about to attack Iran. So all the flights have been canceled to Iran. And uh, my brother, not brother-in-law, he's my cousin-in-law, feels like a brother-in-law because he's married well, I guess he kind of is. He's married to my, uh, but they're cousins. They're like third cousins. You know, Iranians marry their cousins. <laughs> they're all mar intermarried. Yeah. So my husband's sister's husband just went to Iran yesterday. He just got there and all the flights have been canceled. Now, sh they live in Scotland. Uh, she's been there for, I think, the last three weeks. She went, you know, two and a half weeks ago, something like that. Um, she kind of went at a bad time, and my husband told her, maybe you, you ought to think about, you know, postponing your trip, but she wanted to go. She wanted to go see. She's got grandkids there, so she, she wanted to get back to Iran. She only speaks Farsi, so she lives in Scotland. I'm sure there's very limited people that she's able to talk to and go anywhere and do anything. So she loves going back home to Iran. Anyway, her husband joined her yesterday and all the flights are now canceled. And all the flights are canceled to and from. So y'all know my husband's Iranian. Um, all his family lives there. Every, you know, everybody else practically lives in Iran. He has, you know, cousins all over in every country just about, you know, in Canada, the United States, Spain, all over the place. But the majority of them are still in Iran. So it's very unsettling, very, very unsettling. And uh, three of the airlines inside Iran, uh, Iran Air, Mahan, and Saha Airlines, I think I'm saying them correctly, uh, uh, they have put sanctions against all those airlines. They've included them. You know, there's been sanctions against Iran, but now they've included those airlines also because uh, they were helping Russia. They're sending parts through these airlines to build Russia's um, missiles, uh, send them drones and just all kinds of maintenance, maintenance parts and everything, you know, for the military. They're helping out, uh, Iran is helping out Russia 
So those airlines, they're on sanction list now. So uh, all the flights to and from Europe, they're all canceled, you know, for those airlines. Uh, Iranians, you know, they're, they're going to be able to get out of Iran, I'm sure, because they can go to the nearby countries and leave the country that way. They have, you know, they can just go across the border to Turkey and uh, leave that away. It's probably very super inconvenient, but they will be able to get out, I'm sure. Uh, but I do feel like that, um, that it's a sign of things to come, definitely. You know, it's really sad because it's the people that pay the price for their government's actions. Just the reg just regular people, they're the ones that pay the price. And I, I did a little meditation before I came on, and I wanted to get some information for you guys to see what's about to happen in Iran. Um, and I'm being shown that Israel is planning to attack Iran. But what I'm getting is that it's in a way that they didn't see coming. And I don't know what this means, but I'm seeing like, it's like a backstab. Like, I, you know, stabbing in the back. I, that's what I'm being shown. So it's like the knife comes in through the back. Um... Hmm. Also, I'm being shown that uh, I see an explosion, but it doesn't feel like it's a bomb that exploded. It feels like something from the ground explodes. Um, it looks different from a bomb. It is at nighttime, and it, it almost looks like fireworks coming out. You know, not like, not like smoke, like a bomb, like an, a big explosion. It looks like fireworks, like fires coming out. Um, and maybe something that's planted there, you know, some kind of explosive device that's planted. And I feel like this is going to be, a, it's going to be a military base. And I see a round metal structure which I've I've never seen one before in my life but this is what I'm being shown being told this is what I feel like this is what it is is a some type of missile launcher so they're going to um, hit military targets that have these missile launchers you know because you know they did they did um, launch a whole bunch of missiles at Israel. So that's that's what they're targeting. I also see, and I can only say frogmen, you know, like that's what we would call our military frogmen. I, I feel like there's frogmen in the water and they're watching from a distance because uh, the water is lapping right at their goggles and I feel like I'm floating. So they're watching from the water. So, so maybe, I don't know how they would do that. I don't know, you know, well, I don't know. Maybe they have a ship and they, they uh, are able to infiltrate the shore somehow, but I'm, that's what I'm seeing. So I feel like there's some type of covert operation going on, some kind of ground offensive going on. Um, I do see boots on the ground, but um, it's more, it's an, it's an undercover covert operation. It's not like the military is just infiltrating in. It's some kind of covert operation. That's what I'm getting. And I think the boots on the ground is just to tell me that it's... Um, you know, maybe like a spy, you know, some type of spy. You know, uh, Israel hasn't done anything. They haven't retaliated yet against Iran, and they said something would be coming. And, you know, we've all been wondering and waiting, when is it going to happen? When's the shoe going to drop, you know? But I feel like this, um, 
there's an operation going on and they're collecting information, you know, they're getting intel. I, th I think that's what was happening. You know, of course, our, our country and uh, many other countries around there, all the Arab states were saying, you know, we don't, we don't want a full war here. We don't want you to blow up their oil you know, sites, their oil facilities or their nuclear facilities or anything. Um, you know, you've got to be careful. You don't, we don't want, you know, you to do things like that. And so Netanyahu has said, I won't do that. <laughs> I don't believe him. I don't trust this man at all. I really, really don't. He's shown that he doesn't care about casualties of war at all. He's so hard hearted. Um, you know, he thinks strength is um, conquering and killing your opponent. The lack of compassion for life is just astounding. You know, I, I feel like all these things that are happening in the world, it is meant to wake us all up to universal awareness that we're all interconnected with all of creation. And it reminds us to keep, you know, our lower self in check with our higher self. And uh, Netanyahu needs to do that too. So you guys pray for peace because what affects them ultimately will affect us also because we're all one. So I ask the white light to shield and protect all the innocent people you know, from all lands, from everywhere, you know, no matter where they live, in the whole region, I just ask for there to be protection for them and that the highest good to be the final outcome, whatever that may be. And I ask y'all to pray also because we, we really need to de-escalate. And, you know, even though uh, we, we, we said prayers, we sent good, you know, um, intention, good energy towards that hurricane that hit Florida. And although it was devastating and there's still people that their homes are flooded and everything, it could have been so much worse. And it was predicted to be so much worse. And they were really shocked and thought it was incredible that actually it wasn't as devastating as they had predicted. And we can also use our prayer and use all that energy, put it forth between Israel, Iran, Gaza Strip, all the, all the states there, Ukraine, Russia. We can pray for all those people, all those countries, pray for peace and stability and pray for the highest good to come out of every situation and expect it, expect that that's gonna happen. You know, the more we can visualize that and expect it to happen and pray for it and know that it's going to happen, it will. We can really turn the tide and help. We really can. And uh, we, you guys ought to know by now how much power we all have when we work together. So please pray for everybody. They need your prayers. Everybody does. Uh, we don't want to hear about, you know, Iran being devastated and a lot of innocent people being killed. I know there are still people in Gaza still being bombed by Israel. Stop bombing these people. My goodness. Stop it. Let's pray that Israel stops bombing innocent people. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. You know, they need protection. They need help. And that's all me and you can do. That's all we can do is pray for them and ask for protection for them. And they, they'll receive it. They will receive it. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you all for listening in. I appreciate it. Thank you for your prayers. Do something kind for somebody. It will always come back to you. Bye for now.